Pearl Harbor visit on Hiroshima Day. August 6, 2024 was the 79th anniversary of the nuclear attack on Hiroshima. Now, as a longtime resident of Hiroshima, I'm usually spending the day at Peace Park, taking in the commemorations, peace protests, floating lanterns, and powerful speeches of the day. But this year, I was on break in Hawaii, so it was a chance to spend Hiroshima Day at Pearl Harbor. A lot of the American visitors I guide on tours in Hiroshima say they think of the surprise nuclear attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 as a consequence of the Pearl Harbor surprise attack by the Japanese in 1941. Most visitors come to Hiroshima with a strong belief that dropping the A-bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was the only way to end World War II and save hundreds of thousands of lives on both sides. After years of living in and learning about Hiroshima's story, I don't think the story is quite as matter-of-fact as those statements. But why visit Pearl Harbor on Hiroshima Day? I wanted to visit to see the interconnected narratives at Pearl Harbor in connection with Hiroshima. It was also a chance to see if there were any new initiatives and projects in place between these two historical parks since the Sister Peace Park Agreement was set up by the U.S. Ambassador to Japan and the Mayor of Hiroshima in 2023. We arrived at the Pearl Harbor Memorial at 7 a.m. on August 6th to beat the crowds. After we paid for parking, we could visit for free. We felt lucky to head out on the first boat of the day to the Memorial of Arizona USS, a beautifully designed, peaceful, floating pavilion above the sunken ship USS Arizona where the bodies of more than 900 sailors and marines were kept where they died. Before heading out to the boat, we were given a 30-minute orientation by a passionate ranger who gave us a powerful talk encouraging us visitors to maintain our sense of place. As a guide in Hiroshima, I really appreciated how the rangers primed the visitors to be respectful and thoughtful during their visit. Some of the things they said really left an impact on me. This is a powerful and important place. As you stand above the sunken ship, remember that you are visiting a grave. People visit here to pay their respects to their loved ones. This is not an attraction. If you can't stay off your phone for the next hour, this is not the place for you. Those were things the Pearl Harbor Rangers said. Once we arrived at the floating Arizona Memorial, a ranger shared with us about the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor and how the sailors below were trapped inside the sunken ships for three days. People standing on shore could hear the banging on the inside of the ship by those who were trapped. Even though it was impossible to rescue anyone, crews kept going out into the flames to attempt rescue of the trapped men. He described how there were fires burning everywhere, even underwater, at temperatures above 300 degrees. This made rescues impossible, but they kept trying. Most of those brave men never gave up, but also died in the process. Once back at the main museum compound, we walk through the exhibits describing life on Hawaii in 1941. The Japanese tactics of war, which led to the Pearl Harbor attack, and the shock and lasting fear of the sneak attack on local people. There were detailed stories of the attack and information about the 2,403 soldiers and civilians who died because of the attack, 
Stories of the aftermath included stories of internment and discrimination against Hawaii locals of Japanese ancestry. Post Pearl Harbor, there was strong determination to fight back and never let Pearl Harbor happen again. After Pearl Harbor, the U.S. officially entered World War II and a brutal conflict with Japan began, which went on for almost four years. Some of the most heart-wrenching stories at Pearl Harbor are of the Hawaii residents who were of Japanese heritage, which was a third of the local population in 1941. Those who spoke of discrimination and suspicion after the attack were on display in video recordings. They were forced to take down any pictures of Japanese family and destroy images of the emperor, they said. They were put into detention centers and even used as attack dog targets to train dogs to smell the Japanese enemy. Many who felt they were Americans lost their jobs and freedoms because of their race. There were also stories of hardships on the Japanese side. Survivors of the war from Tokyo and Nagano, for example, who spoke of the changes and hardships they faced from changing their school uniform, which looked too similar to the U.S. sailor uniform, to being told to fight to the death, the, the, the death, sorry, with flimsy bamboo spears, to living through hardships of war without enough food and clothes. The Sister Historical Peace Park Agreement. In 2016, President Barack Obama and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visited both Hiroshima on August 6th and Pearl Harbor on December 11th as an effort to peaceful collaboration between these two countries at these two very key World War II historical sites for the allies, Japan and America. By connecting our two peoples to our shared past, we can build a shared future grounded in peace and cooperation, President Barack Obama said in 2016. In 2023, the American ambassador to Japan, Ram Emanuel, and the mayor of Hiroshima, Kazumi Matsui, signed a sister peace park agreement to further establish peaceful ties through collaboration between Pearl Harbor and Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park. Nobody can go to Pearl Harbor and nobody can go to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial and enter the front door, walk out the exit door, and be the same person, Ram Emanuel said. Knowing about the sister park relationship, we were surprised that there were no testimonies from Hibakusha A-bomb survivors from Hiroshima or Nagasaki at the Pearl Harbor Museum. We also couldn't find any information about the Sister Historical Peace Park Agreement. We were encouraged, however, to see a section about Sadako Sasaki and the Thousand Cranes. We were also pleased to learn about the Peace Light Up event that would be held on the 7th, which the Rangers said they hold annually during the week of the anniversaries of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. The Light Up for Peace event at Pearl Harbor was a very small gathering of local people and rangers at the memorial. It was a moving event and felt special to represent people from Hiroshima. It felt like a positive step toward creating more collaboration and mutual respect in commemorations between Japan and America. The rangers said they were also welcoming a bomb survivors to visit Pearl Harbor later in the month. At the light up event, a ranger spoke of a Japanese farmer in Shizuoka named Fukumatsu Ito. He tried to help American pilots who crashed into his town after killing thousands of his friends and neighbors in the bombs that they dropped. 
When the American soldiers died, Ito buried them alongside his friends and neighbors who had also died and prayed for those whose lives had been lost at the war on both sides. Each year, Ito poured out whiskey into both of the graves of the Japanese and Americans from a blackened canteen he pulled from the American plane wreckage, despite the ridicule he received. Whiskey was poured into the waters above the sunken USS Arizona by a friend of Ito, Dr. Sugano, who promised to carry on the tradition after Ito died on December 6th to commemorate the 50th anniversary in 1991 and again in 2017. I hope this ceremony will move us a step closer to world peace, Dr. Sugano said. At the light up ceremony on August 7th, we placed candles in white bags that visitors to the Pearl Harbor Memorial had decorated with messages of hope and peace. There were also opportunities to fold orizuru origami cranes, listen to stories, and hear a musical performance. We met so many interesting local people and passionate rangers who are sincerely working toward a more peaceful future through mutual respect of these important days of remembrance. The Oppenheimer film effect on Hiroshima tourism. As a guide of the Peace Memorial Park in Hiroshima, I have noticed a shift in perspective from visitors since the Oppenheimer film release in 2023. More international visitors are interested in visiting Hiroshima and now arrive with a more critical view of the A-bomb decision. More visitors seem interested in a multifaceted discussion more than a simple justification as they were originally told at school. Many also wonder if Japan would have surrendered earlier if certain changes were made to the agreement and there wasn't such a rush to use the nuclear bomb. Overwhelming historical evidence from American and Japanese archives indicates that Japan would have surrendered that August even if atomic bombs had not been used. And documents prove that President Truman and his closest advisors knew it. That was according to the LA Times in 2020. The 2023 Academy Award winning film Oppenheimer showed the drive of scientists to develop the nuclear bomb as well as the strong political motivations of American leaders to be the first country to use nuclear weapons. Of course, we will never know if there was a non-nuclear option to end the war in Japan, but before the August 6th ceremony on this 79th anniversary, 5,074 additional names were added as they do each year to update the number of names written on books kept under the Cenotaph Memorial Monument. Now, as of 2024, there are 344,306 names documented on thousands of books under the Cenotaph. Names of Japanese, American, Korean, and other nationalities as well, who were within the two-kilometer blast zone and who died as a direct or delayed result of the nuclear attack on Hiroshima. There's more clarity and ownership of the past at these two key sites needed. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park and Museum says a uh, very little about Pearl Harbor. There is one section which states, in December 1941, the Pacific War began with the Japanese military landing on the Malay Peninsula and carrying out a surprise attack on the U.S. base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. As I mentioned above, there is also very little 
at the Pearl Harbor Museum about the nuclear attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's difficult to objectively discuss these controversial aggressions during wartime, but these are the aspects of history that need the most care for clarity and honesty. I hope these are aspects at both the Pearl Harbor and Hiroshima museums that could be improved upon now that there is a renewed sense of collaborative focus with the historical Peace Park Sister Agreement. If groups from both sides can sit together and work on how the stories are written, it would be more fair, honest, and meaningful. A large part of the, his, of the Pearl Harbor Museum is focused on Japanese military development, tactical decisions, and wartime hardships by the Japanese government for people in Japan. As of 2024, there is only a brief explanation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki attacks titled Long Road to Peace. In this section, it says, the war against Japan was brutal. Americans and their allies fought relentlessly against fierce resistance across the islands of the Pacific, through the jungles of Southeast Asia, and in the skies over Japan. The war culminated with the dropping of two atomic bombs on Hiroshima on August 6 and Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. On August 15, the Japanese surrendered. This was the information written at the Pearl Harbor Museum, August 6, 2024. Sadako Sasaki. It struck me as odd to leave out a reference to how many people were killed and suffered from the nuclear attacks of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. However, at the end of the museum route, there is a section about Sadako Sasaki and the thousands of cranes for peace. The pictures displayed of Sadako next to thousands of peace cranes folded by local Hawaii groups are of Sadako as a young girl in her school uniform with her family and with classmates at Hiroshima's beautiful Shukayan Gardens in front of a famous A-bomb survivor stone bridge. Sadako Sasaki, she was only two at the time of the nuclear attack on Hiroshima in 1945, but seemed okay at the time. She was very sporty in elementary school and had many friends. Then, 10 years after the bombing, she started getting sick and her friends couldn't believe it. Sadako and her family and friends were all folding cranes in hopes she would get better. At the same time, Sadako's classmates campaigned and raised funds to create the Children's Monument in the center of Peace Park, which has become a central focus of student groups visiting the park. It is a stunning memorial with Sadako standing atop holding a crane. Groups visiting the Peace Park gather here to sing, to make speeches about peace, and then to hang thousands of Orizuru peace cranes, which they have worked on together in their peace education classes. At the Pearl Harbor gift shop, we were happy to see another section dedicated to the story of Sadako Sasaki and a chance to write messages of hope and peace on the wings of folded Orizuru peace cranes. Years ago, on another visit to Hawaii, I also had the opportunity to see a wonderful musical play called Peace on Your Wings, performed by local Hawaii youth about Japan's school culture, festivals, and a powerful interpretation of Sadako Sasaki's life and death. Sadako's brother, Masahiro Sasaki, was also at the same performance, and it was wonderful to hear him speak about his memories of Sadako and the need for peace in both Japan and America. In our nearly 30 years in Hiroshima, we have seen how displays and narratives are adapted in efforts to remain relevant for visitors over time. I have always respected and appreciated the difficult task of museum curation at the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum as well as at Pearl Harbor. 
giving visitors a sense of place and showing respect for lives lost on both sides of the war. I was skeptical of the Sister Peace Park initiative, but now feel hopeful that after this visit on August 6th to the Hiroshima, uh, to the on Hiroshima Day, to the Pearl Harbor Memorial, and again for the Peace Light Up event on the evening of the 7th at Pearl Harbor again. This experience has given me a renewed respect for the changes happening at the Pearl Harbor Memorial Museum. The new historical park agreement between Hiroshima and Pearl Harbor seemed like an opportunity to add the necessary layers of complexity and mutual understanding to the politics, devastation, and aftermath of the attacks by both Japan and the U.S. during World War II. Peace and conflict negotiation are ongoing duties for all of us. It was even more special for me to go to Pearl Harbor on Hiroshima Day with our daughter, who has grown up bilingually and biculturally as an American British citizen living in Hiroshima. She said she was deeply impacted by the Japanese music of peace, which was played at the Pearl Harbor Light Up event, which she recognized from her days at public school in Japan. She chose to write her messages of hope for peace in Japanese on the illumination bags at Pearl Harbor. And when she is in Hiroshima, she volunteers to interpret Hibakusha Abam survivor testimony into English. If you visit the Hachidorisha Peace Social Book Cafe, you can hear Hibakusha Abam survivor testimony there on any day of the month with a six. So six, 16, 26. It is a more peaceful future for our kids like our daughter doing their part to develop mutual understanding that drives me to do what I can too for the benefit of future generations. Have you visited Pearl Harbor and or have you visited the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park? I'd love to hear your comments on this post as well as any insights you may have, uh, please write me a message, read out on social, reach out on social media, or leave a comment below. Thanks so much for listening.